Hi everybody, my name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto Under 20. And I just got back from my walk and I was listening to a wonderful interview about somebody that works with Dr. Jason Fung and how she lost 80 pounds. And here she was around all these people and I guess whatever clinic Dr. Fung was in at the time, they kind of made fun of him for his ideas. And she kept gaining and she was miserable and so she finally went to him and said, okay, make me your first patient. I will do whatever it is you want me to do. And 80 pounds later, um, it sounds like it's a very awesome relationship for her. And she does the assessments and the, you know, who you meet when you first go in and um, how she has worked it. And of course, people don't believe her now that she's 80 pounds less and she's young and so she's tiny and um she said trust me <laughs> i wasn't always like this i was you know one bite away from being diabetic so um it was great to hear from her and it started me thinking about bottoms the bottom of your food journey the desperate i'm at the end I can't take this anymore. It's before the doctor gives you bad news. It's it's grabbing yourself. It's like it's like the um, coyote runner, the road runner, and he's grabbing that branch on the ledge after after diving off the ledge, and there's a branch halfway down. It's like grabbing yourself and saying, "This is it." So a lot of us have a food funeral. Must be out of green trash bags, right? Instead of doing the pantry cleansing and the food and the freezer and the fridge, um, you do the food funeral. And then you really know you're at the bottom because you wake up that next day and you are just so, so sick. And a lot of us are lucky to say a day like that, a morning like that, was our bottom. And we are appreciative enough and committed enough to our keto under 20 food plan to not have to go back again, to not have to test the waters, to not have to see if somebody else thinks that, uh, you know, we should have something and we cave because we're not strong enough in our convictions yet. And so we have something we learn. Like recently, the 4th of July, um, maybe some of you had something that somebody kind of pushed on you because either they wanted company in their standard American diet food plan they couldn't stand to see that you were a success and they just wanted to chip at that armor, see if they could, and they did. And I don't know, there's just some, that what's that German word, uh, Freuden, something, 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 where we feel good at other people's um, struggles or tragedies because um, we just do, that human factor that's not something that we like to admit. So, have you had your food journey bottom do you feel that you have and that whatever happens to you next is part of your keto journey maybe you're keto 50 grams of carbs a day maybe you're doing keto net carbs and not doing total carbs where a lot of things could slip right in trust me um, what comes to mind are those those wraps where they're like eight grams of carbs I mean eight grams of fiber 10 grams of farb, so it's like that net, 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 I don't know what it is. But you could still be fooling yourself and having like a fake standard American diet. Um, still allowing things that you used to have full board of carbs and kind of still in that place of like not seeing the beauty of not having any of that anymore. Um, for me, my bottom, I guess, was a journey. You know, it was like feeling disgusted with my menopot, as many of you have heard, and um, going to Weight Watchers and staying with that Weight Watchers food plan, losing um, 17 pounds in like a month and a half, and then just staying there. And all of a sudden saying, mm, you know, there's more to this. And so then somehow finding doctors Finney and Volek and beginning a low-carb, high-fat food plan. And that was having an enormous amount of veggie carbs every single day. And I wasn't losing, I wasn't gaining, but I certainly wasn't satiated, and I really wasn't happy with it. There's, some, 
there was something that still didn't feel kind of like clean and tidy about having all the carbs that I wanted to in the forms of Brussels sprouts or asparagus or broccoli, things like that. And so um, then in December of 2016, it was like, okay, we're going to do keto under 20. So that was about seven, oh, about eight months ago. And how do I feel today with my keto under 20? I feel great. And it is total carbs, not net. And I somehow fit them all in. There are days that I'm under 20 carbs. There are days that I'm like at 22 carbs. But it all evens out at the end of the week. It's 140 grams of carbs over seven days. Because when I throw in that power green baby chard, baby spinach, baby kale um, saute that I do um, and bacon fat, thank you very much, um, you know, it ups my carbs because they have, uh, the kale and the chard have more carbs. But I still do it because they are power greens and I always have my big green leafy salad which is made from organic romaine and organic red cabbage and that's a standard in my food plan. My protein either goes in the salad like I'm having tonight with four ounces of porterhouse steak or it's on the side of the salad like last night having an organic pork chop as an accompaniment to the salad and the power green saute. So my bottom wasn't this hideous take me to rehab like an alcoholic or a drug addict that you picture on the ride there where like they're one they're one shot one drink away from being in the ambulance being rushed there in a coma um, it was kind of a slow motion lead into the keto under 20 the process took about two and a half years to get here with food consciousness even doing Weight Watchers. I mean, I was very conscious of the fact that I could eat six to eight fruits a day with permission. I, I can't even imagine that now, but uh, that's how I rolled. And today, there's really no fruit. There's no fruit. You know, a couple of times you've heard me say I've had an ounce of raspberries or an ounce of blueberries or an ounce of strawberries, but that hasn't happened for over a month. Um, my dairy is moderate, and um, I do allow it. I do allow cheese and I do allow um, cream cheese and um, heavy whipping cream in my Bulletproof coffee. I have two meals a day. My ideal window is 20 hours of my fat fast, which means that I have my Bulletproof fat, fatty coffee at 3 in the morning. And then my first meal is between 11 and noon that day. So I've been up for 9 or um, eight or nine hours before I have my first meal of the day. And that's when I start to get hungry. My stomach growls at 7.30, but it's not really hungry. It just means the food's gone through. And it's funny because when I'm working my overnight at 3 o'clock in the morning, so 12 hours after I had my last meal of the day the day before, it starts growling, and I guess it's probably because I was wor I'm working. And I do do a midnight shift tonight, it's an extra one, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. And so my last meal of the day will begin at 3 today. And, um, and so I will have my uh, fatty coffee or two while I'm working. And then have my, sometimes I'm super hungry and I'll eat at 10 after an overnight. But most times I can stay busy until 11 or 11.30. Like just now, I just came back from my 2.6 mile walk. It is... Uh, 10 to 6 in the morning, and I made my um, salad for tonight. I made, um, I, I prepped for Greg to have his Capri salad, things like that. I'm meeting a friend today from North Carolina. We're going to breakfast at 10, and so um, my window will be a five or six hour window today rather than the four that I prefer, but that's how it rolls when you you know, when life enters, I mean, my North Carolina friend, I haven't seen her for two years, so it's important that I see her, and, and that works for both of us. So, my bottom probably was my Weight Watcher moment with the food, and seeing that I was sitting there at a meeting, and my menopot pot was more, it went past where my boobs were. 
I didn't like that. I'd ceased wearing belts. I like to wear belts with white starchy shirts in the summer with my khakis or my pixie pants from Old Navy. It wasn't happening anymore because my menopot, you can't put a belt on a menopot. You know what I'm saying? That's one of the signs I needed to do something. And so that was my, that was my bottom and I entered Weight Watchers and it took what it took. Just like for some of you, it takes what it takes. Um, for me, it took the Weight Watchers to low carb, high fat, to keto under 20 total carbs. For some of you, it's diving right into keto and then it's having um, times when you relapse and you have carbs that you shouldn't have because you were pulled away from your discipline and momentum. Whatever it takes, don't beat yourself up. Um, in the podcast that I was listening to today, when people uh, do, do having extra carbs and things like that, more food than they should, uh, she was talking about having, you know, four to six meals on a vacation day instead of including the snacks, instead of having your two um, substantial meals that you might when you weren't on vacation. She said, um, just fast a little bit longer the next day or the whole day. Um, give your body that rest after having the overload of either too much keto food or just too much food with carbs included. And so that makes sense to me. Um, I did that the other day. I went a whole day, I went a whole 24 hours and just had that one meal that day. And that's because I had too much steak. Um, it was Sunday and we had big porterhouses on the grill and I know I had, I know I had eight or nine ounces of beef instead of my usual four to six for my um, big green egg steak night. And so that's what I did the next day. I was able to go to just that one meal a day and it felt restorative. It felt therapeutic. So think of the intermittent fasting or a whole day of fasting if you've overindulged to get back on track to empty out your body. She talked about it as if it was a stored refrigerator with all that extra food that you ate, like on vacation or a special event or something like that, and how you want to empty out that fridge before having more food. And she says it's a visual that when she talks to the patients, they understand. And I understood it too. Um, I like that idea that there's more leftovers in that fridge than you would normally have if you were doing you know, your regular whatever food plan works for you, um, if you're fasting or not, and, um, and then you go a little bit um, to the side of the road <laughs> of your keto journey, and you need to empty it out and make it normal again, whatever your normal is. So this has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food, with Keto Under 20, talking about my bottom, which happened to end with ridiculous eating when I entered into Weight Watchers. That's when I was addicted to definitely um, cakes was the worst. And then I'm um, continuing my addiction with the Weight Watcher snacks and treats and six to eight fruits a day until getting to low carb high fat where there were no grains and there were um, there were no grains, there were no sugars and uh, very limited fruits to the keto under 20 with no grains, no sugars, no fruits, total carbs, under 20. It's a, it was a journey for me. For some, you dive in, never look back. For some, you do it for a while, get bored, allow yourself a treat, and then suffer the consequences, which we talked about in a previous video. Whatever it takes. But hopefully, your bottom is behind you. Ooh, ooh, pun intended. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food with Keto, under 20, sitting on my bottom. Bye-bye for now.